We're going to start off with the college football playoff. And the first game was the Cotton Bowl. Alabama 27, Cincinnati 6. Post-game win expectancy, Alabama 100%. You could tell on the opening drive. They ran it 10 times right down the field. And then Bryce Young threw a little 8-yard pass for a touchdown. And you could almost tell right then... Eh, I don't know that Cincinnati's got enough juice to hang in this ball game. Best- Maybe not at that point. Where the game flipped was Alabama calling the timeout on defense. Oh, one hundred percent. Cincinnati. That's what I was about to say. Got the ball and did the exact same thing Alabama did. Well, they after that timeout, right, they did not they run went, the ball again. They went like, right down the field. They got out to like the the eight yard line, and Nick calls a timeout on defense. And I thought, whoa, Nick is worried. Nick is worried. Nick sees something that bothers him. And, and I think he was, and I think he got it corrected. That's what good coaches do. And after that, and they couldn't punch it in, and they had to settle yeah. for three, That was that's when I realized, well, that's ball game, because that offense never got back clicking again. I think if they don't call a timeout, Cincinnati scores a touchdown, this very much has the feeling of we're going tit for tat. And, and Georgia, Michigan was really kind of the same thing, and we'll talk about that one here in a minute. We'll stay on uh, on topic with this. I really thought they would try and run Desmond Ritter more in this ball game. Cincinnati, ten rushes for negative six yards. They it, Cincinnati's offensive line just could not block Alabama's That's, front yeah. seven at all. Like there was no. no prayer. Jerome Ford still fifteen carries, seventy seven yards. Like he was able to get some yardage. His uh, his rushing total was seventy and a half, and it went over. Yeah. Kind of didn't expect that, but you know, also there really wasn't a lot that they could do for the entire ballgame. Cincinnati had 218 total yards, 144 of that passing, 74 of that rushing. I mean, you look at it, it wasn't anything off of turnovers, anything like that. Alabama was the more physically dominant team. And once Bill O'Brien and Nick Saban realized, oh, we can dial up anything that we want at any point, they kind of just stuffed everything back in the bag the thing to look out for, you know, Jamison Williams went out with an injury for just a little bit from a kick return where he just got leveled, absolutely leveled. And they've got an offensive lineman. Emil Ikior is, we don't know what's going to happen with him. And then Chris Owens, uh, another offensive lineman. If those two guys are out against Georgia, I mean, it, this will be a completely different ball game than what we saw in the SEC championship game. Uh, but there's been no word on those two as of yet. But to stay on this one, Brian Robinson, 26 carries, 204 yards rushing. Trey Sanders, 14 carries for 67 yards. Alabama had 301 yards rushing on 47 attempts. They hadn't done that all year. I mean, against anybody. So Yeah, but but this is where the difference between, and I'm not going to talk about G5, Power 5. This is the difference between SEC caliber athletes and non Alabama couldn't physically do that against, and I'm not talking about great teams. I'm talking about mediocre teams, Florida. They couldn't do it against yeah. LSU. They couldn't do it against Auburn because our defensive front, you just can't push around like that. Right. And and while Cincinnati was a substantially better team than the three teams that I just named from top to bottom all year, the, just the physical makeup of a man, just size and 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 the ability to stand your ground and not get pushed around like that is just it, it's just different. It's not a matter of work. That's not a matter of skill. At some point in time, I'm just bigger and I have a strong enough base to where you're just not going to push me like that. And it's all about size. And and that was the difference is is the guys on Cincinnati just they just not built the same until you're yeah. until you're recruiting those level players in the trench you're going to be able to just push people around. There's a reason Alabama wasn't able to do it all year. They couldn't do it against Mississippi State. They couldn't do it against Ole Miss. I'm not even talking about the three big boys that I named off that are just known historically for having great defensive lines, even when the rest of the team's not good. The the teams that are not historically known for having good defensive lines, Alabama couldn't do it against in the SEC. Because they've all got talent on the defensive line. and Everybody's got that kind of size they're adequately this year in and year out. Yes, they are all adequately sized, and Cincinnati is not. Now, of course, this brings up the the age old question: You put Cincinnati like the the peak G five, which again we don't like to talk about the the difference here, but you put Cincinnati in the SEC this season. I, I don't think that they're going undefeated. Like, well, I, no, they're not going undefeated, yeah. and it would be ridiculous to think they are. But 
I, I don't think they're bad either. I mean, I still think they're better than, you know, 80% of the SEC. Oh, yeah. Because because not everybody else has it. No one else has it. Like, LSU's offensive line is not good enough to do what Alabama did to them. Like, like we don't have the dudes that you have and you had. Georgia could do it and Alabama could have done it. But I don't know that anybody else was doing it. No, I, I don't think you're wrong there. I don't think you're wrong. I... So, so looking at this game, this was at least a competitive game for a while. It, for a little bit, yeah. Cincinnati did enough things to make Alabama uncomfortable. They, I'll tell you this, the Tide, they could not figure out pass pro in this ball game against those undersized guys, which is hilarious to think about the fact that they could run all day long on them because all you have to do is go forward. But when you have to pass pro, uh, well, since he ran some different things that – they were able to get into the backfield, well, and, and Bryce and Young Cincinnati, wasn't exactly great. Cincinnati's got two elite DBs, elite yep. DBs that are going to play on Sundays. That's that's what helps a whole lot. I was shocked, and I thought they played a little conservative. I think the announcers talked about this once or twice. Maybe, maybe I, I was thinking it and saying it to somebody else, but I was shocked that Cincinnati was playing so conservative by not putting another bringing the safety up you, at some point in time. You're so afraid of the the speed of Alabama. It, it, you got to trust your NFL. You've got two NFL DBs. You got to trust those guys to be NFL DBs and to lock those dudes down. And you got to bring somebody else in the box. Yeah. When when they were when they were running a seven man box and Alabama's just running it down your throat. Your only way of stopping that is to bring the eighth man down. You just have to. And they never did the whole game. They just said we'll let you bludgeon us to death, but you're not going to bomb us. Yeah. It was it was really strange the way that Cincinnati went at this game. But I will tell you that it, it, I believe it was the Yahoo Sports podcast that said that is a coach's worst nightmare is when you line up and you see the the first two drives and you figure out shit. Nick Saban has yeah. figured us out already. Like we are five ten minutes into this ball game and we got no prayer at this point. Like and that's that's what happened with with Fickle one on the defensive side. And then two on offense when they called that timeout and Alabama ran out different uh, formations down there at the uh, goal line, it totally changed it up. Totally changed the game. Back. So yeah. and from there it was you know there were there were some things that that since he did to at least make it competitive, uh, but I do still kind of feel Alabama almost could have named their score in this. This was more let's try not to get anybody hurt. I, said, and I don't know I don't know about name your score because they weren't able to score fast. They were just I, able to score every drive. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. They they couldn't just score any time they wanted, though. They I couldn't agree. Just drop back and 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 and, and throw a bomb. No, Since no, you definitely all that. Yeah, you're definitely not wrong about that. Uh, no, James it's Williams going out eight minutes to score on us. You're going to score, but you're going to eat a lot of clock, and you're just going to take a long time. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I was surprised. Uh, let me tell you what I was surprised about. Let me tell you a positive on Cincinnati. Okay. okay? Alabama's bigger, stronger, faster. They've got ever not. There's not a single position on offense that that Cincinnati has an advantage talent wise. That's not on defense, other than maybe the two DBs. Okay. At no point in time did Cincinnati's defense and Alabama own the field all day long with these long, sustainable drives. At no time did Cincinnati just break. I thought when the fourth quarter hit. Alabama was going to run away with the game. And I'm not talking about they beat them pretty physically and they beat them badly. And I'm talking 30, 40 points. Like, like yeah. that's when the game's going to get ugly because now the defense is just gassed. Like they've got nothing left. They've been on the field all day. We're, we're in the fourth quarter. They're still fighting. They're still getting stops. They're still making Alabama work. They're still making you take six yards of play, four yards of play, three yards of play. And 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 at no point in time did they just give up. And yeah. and and the the bow break last night in the Baylor Ole Miss game that we watched. I I I, I told four people, different people that I was texting with in different groups, and I said, "Don't worry, I don't know what this game's going to look like through quarter one through three, but by quarter four it's over." By quarter four, it's over. They're like, how can you say? Because Baylor's offense is eventually going to break one because Ole Miss doesn't have the talent to keep taking these gut shots over and over and over and over and over again and sustaining it. Yeah. They just don't. That defense isn't made the same. And that's not a knock on them. It's just a talent they've got on the field. Cincinnati never broke. 
Yeah, it was it was very impressive. Thought that was impressive. Thought that um, was impressive. The so scoring opportunities, Alabama had six drives inside of the Cincy forty. They scored twenty points. That's three point three three per drive. Cincy had four scoring opportunities. That's four different drives that got inside the forty. They were only able to muster two field goals. That's one point five points per opportunity. That is not good. Definitely not good. And then of course Alabama did have the forty four yard touchdown pass to Jacory Brooks, the one that that they were finally able to get a deep pass going on. And really, that touchdown pass before the half was all she wrote. I mean, it was 10-3. Well, yeah, I was about most to say, of the first I think half. it was ball game before that. Yeah. yeah. So, at, at that point, when it got to 17-3 to three at the half, it was, okay, like, it, this is kind of what everybody expected but was hoping maybe we wouldn't see, and, and that's exactly what we got. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.